now it's time for another keynote discussion presented by Zichi Chen, who's the CEO of Cortex Labs. Cortex's mission is to provide state-of-the-art uh, learning models on the blockchain in which users can infer using smart contracts. Mr. Chen. My name is Zhiqi Chen. I'm the CEO of uh, Cortex Labs. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction about uh, my background. So uh, um, before we started this uh, Cortex Labs, we were a pretty uh, a veteran in the cryptocurrencies world. Uh, I stepped into this domain uh, back into 2013. Uh, at that time, I do mining and trading, and then because uh, my background is still uh, pretty much engineering-driven technolo technology background. Then I shift to uh, develop the like mining pool uh, and uh, digital wallets and OTC trading platform. Um, so uh, before we start this labs, I have another uh, company is called uh, Waterhole.io. We uh, contribute like five percent of a uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, hash power globally and 1% of uh, Zcash, and 1% of uh, uh, Ethereum. Um, so among our three co-founders, there is also another uh, guy called uh, Chen Jia. Uh, he is uh, probably the, one of the earliest guy who know Bitcoin over China. So he started mining in 2011. Then uh, back into 2016, we met together, so want to have some um, make some fancy thing, bring AI on blockchain. Uh, so in the last year, we met another co-founder, Wei Yang Wang, who is our CTO right now. So he was in the first hand of AI developing and uh, you know, AI competition things. So then uh, we discussed together to start this project. So that's the decentralized AI autonomous system. So I will go through uh, four topics, talking about a little bit uh, blockchain and smart contract, artificial intelligence, uh, some engineering challenges, and our visions. So uh, I want to reiterate the uh, core value of a blockchain, because uh, you see there are a lot of examples from uh, Bitcoin to uh, Zcash. Um, so all the database is still transparent. You can see all the transactions in, the each, uh, in, in, in the each ledger book. So a blockchain has to be transparent and uh, it has to reach some consensus so that the data is uh, immutable. So uh, when we make AI on blockchain, we keep thinking about this. We want our project to be necessary. There are a lot of projects currently running. Uh, we don't think that's necessary enough to just simply combine blockchain. But when we start AI on blockchain, we keep think about these three core features. And uh, smart contract is actually, uh, the idea is uh, found is actually earlier, much, much earlier than the birth of Bitcoin is by Nick Zabo. Um, the idea is very simple, to make um, the contract, turn the contract into electronic version, convert to code, and make the contract, smart contract, uh, in the ledger book is encrypted in the block, block by block, into the blockchain. Uh, I wouldn't say the whole story of what Ethereum is smart contract, but the major catch for Ethereum is simply a uh, smart contract. So the smart contract has to be uh, Turing complete, Turing complete and it's unstoppable. And the code is law. All the rules written into smart contract has to be executed uh, automatically. There's uh, no third party can stop that. That's the core value of smart contract. And uh, 
the AI part, uh, so this page is a little bit sophisticated. So from the Fermat's Lasser theorem, you know this, probably a lot of guys know this joke. Uh, so mathematicians have spent 350 years try to find some elementary method to solve this. But it turns out you have to use more advanced theory to solve this problem. So from this pers perspective of a view, we, th we think about AI is just, you know, why AI is more advanced in, uh, after 2010. It's just simply because of the engineering uh, tool. There are more engineering tool available on the GPU platform. It's very simple. The neural nets uh, algorithm hasn't been developed too much since that. Uh, so this is the history of the, you know, the, the AI, past AI history. So <clears throat> there are two parts in AI. One is the you know, training, one is the inference. So what we will do is only focus on inference. So why the training is, so why we don't do training? Um, the industry predict the deep learning markets, the, the electricity uh, consumption for training uh, in deep learning will be exist all the you know, cryptocurrencies mining combined together in the next five to 10 years. But because of the uh, stochastic gradient descent, the algorithm using for deep learning can we use that as a POW to replace, to replace the SHA-256, the Bitcoin uh, POW? Some people is claiming, uh, so Bitcoin is wasting a lot of uh, you know, energy. But this not likely to happen in the deep learning domain because uh, uh, SGD process is a symmetric verification. But you, know, you are doing hash. Uh, the encryption process is asymmetric uh, verification. So if you have a computer running the training algorithm versus running a, a, a encryption, uh, when, when the computer running encryption, you can instantly verify the results um, return back from the computer. You can get uh, how much work the computer has been uh, doing. It's very uh, accurate uh, statistically. But the, for the training, if you want to verify the result, basically you need to rerun how many epochs uh, with the accuracy the you know, training has achieved. So it doesn't make too much sense for you know, using SGD as a POW in, to replace uh, uh, Bitcoin. I also want to mention a coin probably called Bytom. So somebody, is claiming, okay, I'm making a uh, computer that's uh, some uh, dedicated hardware. It's very, very good for uh, matrix multipl multiplication. So, um, you know, there is an algorithm called tensority. It's uh, putting some random number in the matrix, put some, you know, in the column, whatever, to make the uh, matrix multiplication. When you see the result reach some, uh, uh, difficulty is the same as a hash function. How many zero uh, in front of the result then is claiming, okay, you, you found a block. But that's actually a, just a, a process of doing the CNN or DNN, the core part. It is not really solving a real uh, machine learning issue during your uh, uh, funding block. So that's a different story. Uh, so let's take back the AI domain. Uh, so currently the data is a very centralized. Computer power is overpriced and the model is confined. Uh, so different AI company is controlled by big company like Google, Facebook, Amazon, as you know. They don't share model with each other. Although there are some uh, available tools like a um, method like transfer learning, you can have a model, then you do your own improvements but they don't share model. So that's the problem happening in AI domain. And uh, we are going to solve that. So, so this is the core idea of our project is making inference 
transparent and available on the blockchain. So you see this is a picture. So by the latest uh, AI technology, uh, the AI is very smart, very uh, similar to human beings' intelligence. So what if the AI is a still hidden behind centralized company? It's the same idea as what happened uh, in Bitcoin back in 2009. It's all your ledger book is hidden behind centralized bank. You don't see the, all the execution. It's not transparent. So what, they, what, what about they you know, playing evil things inside? So that's why we want to bring AI inference uh, up front on the blockchain. Um, so our idea is to make transparent AI model for smart contract. So AI inference will be a built-in uh, functionality within the next generation of a smart contract. This is a example for lending money. You know, so when you go to bank, so you are approved, you are reject, so there must be some factors. So this smart contract will give you all the reasons you know, why you are approved, why, why you are declined, and this process will be governed by the algorithm. The algorithm is transparent. It's like a law. You have a law, you have a code. The code has to be public. And this can be also used in uh, you know, self-driving. If there are two cars you know, on the road, if one car gave a, a yield to the car behind, so there's some micro payment. If you are, you are in a hurry, you are the car behind. You make small payment to the car in front of you. Then the, the micro payment has to be uh, secured within a smart contract. Both the seller and the buyer side, the benefit has to be guaranteed. It's locked in the code. So this is one of the examples. So there are other examples, like a decentralized Federal Reserve, algorithmically regulate a stable coin, um, and uh, some biometrics uh, on the blockchain. They also need a lot of uh, um, complex computation that cannot be done on CPU. So current Ethereum smart contract only run on CPU. We will bring that onto GPU and uh, FPGA. So that's the core value we bring in. Uh, there are a lot of uh, engineering challenges. I will go through a little bit. The whole structure is uh, pretty similar to Ethereum, but we have a storage layer to store um, all the AI models online. So within smart contract, you just call the uh, storage layer, you get a model string, and then you execute the model on chain. So this there is a paradox called Tethys paradox. You change, so basically a ship uh, departure from one port to arrive another port. During that trip, you change every part. The paradox is saying, is the ship still the old ship? So we are experiencing the same thing. So basically we change the core part, the virtual machine in Ethereum, we change to Cortex virtual machine to let it run on CPU and the GPU. It's really like the process you are making an electrical car. So you change the gas engine to a you know, battery. So that's what we are doing right now. Um, so we use endorphin instead of a gas to calculate the resources running on each full node. So how, how much uh, computing resource has to be consumed for a, each smart contract. And we also have a tool. It's a very similar to ONNX. Uh, we call Cortex Model Representation Tool. That's going to unify all the format of the AI model you're trained, because different researchers have a different preference. Somebody like uh, MXNet, somebody want to use TensorFlow. You know, the, the final format has to be unified to be stored on the blockchain. And also we will work on some uh, edge. So by doing this, all the inference, so each uh, end customer will have their own model. 
is really like a mirror of what the real person is. You know, everybody have a, a virtual profile or portrait on the internet. So by doing this, you have your local inference. We make the local inference consistent on the chain within the smart contract so that people can really sell their preference. Well, I'm not saying sell their data. The data is still preserved locally. But everybody could have a, like a virtual currency address and their preference. So all the ads company can sell ads to the customer directly. And this cannot be counterfeit because it's secured in the smart contract and uh, AI inference on the blockchain. Uh, regarding the mining, uh, we will have a lot of fancies in to implement uh, like Cuckoo Cycle. Probably you guys heard about that. That's supposed to be the best algorithm to do anti-ASIC and we are definitely going to take a look at the jump POW, which means for, for each block we randomly choose the uh, algorithm to encrypt those blocks. So that's gonna be a smart idea to uh, like anti-ASIC so is pretty much a GPU and a CPU friendly uh, encryption method. So there are, of course there are a lot of uh, challenges uh, in our project like a GPU loading time. There are some dedicate, dedicated model zoo will be uh, stored in the uh, GPU RAM, all those things. And uh, we are going to work on the inference consistency because all the inference has to be reach the deterministic results. So we will use int instead of a float um, in the model training, those things. I won't go too detail. So um, let's, let me talk about our vision. So our vision is to park all the mice on blockchain. So for each brain, you know, when we get the data, we train the data. We have a model to represent the creatures. So to represent a human being, that's probably gonna be challenging. But we will start from some small bugs or butterflies, observe the whole life of the data from these uh, creatures, and train the data, get the model stored on the blockchain. So for human being, it's gonna to take a you know, long time. And I know there's some uh, fancy project happening in Silicon Valley. They, they want to learn exactly, uh, they learn from the, the uh, human being's brain and upload those models to a centralized company. So within our project, we will allow to, you know, this thing happening on blockchain, on a public blockchain. That's the core value we bring in. And uh, we are listed on uh, Forby Pool and OKEX and we are uh, in the process of contacting Korean market, of course, and uh, a, a group of young engineers, of course, this is a developer conference. We are uh, really looking at uh, talent people, if you are interested to join this project, and uh, uh, we are actually start to looking at uh, office in Silicon Valley area, uh, of course. Uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>